Hello YouTube, Crazy Robot Lady here with another Tiger 2XL tape. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go out in space and explore and see new planets, even though there are only eight of them? I always say nine because that's the way I grew up, but we won't tell everybody else that. Anyway, <laughs> that brings us to the subject of today's tape. Today's program is Voyage to Outer Space. And I believe this tape was intended for kids between uh, seven, seven and 12. So without further ado, let me power up 2XL's boosted vocal system and let's get going. And I'm so sorry about all the hissing. <clears throat> there is something this speaker does not like being close to. I'm not sure if it's my phone or my robot or both. But anyway. All right, so here we go. Thank you for turning to me on. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong voice. You know, robots can pick any voice they want. I think I'll choose this one. This program is called Voyage to Outer Space. If this is the first time you have ever played this program, press 1. If you have ever played this program before, press 2. Press 1 or 2 now. We're going to make like we've never played this. <laughs> I now know this is the first time you have played this program. I have some good news. I, 2XL, was chosen by the President of the United States to be the first robot into deep space. And now I have some bad news. I am scared. <laughs> now I have some good news again. I can choose one human to be my ground controller to help me out. And I have chosen you. Now I have some bad news again. And that is that if you do not know what you are doing, I can crash and maybe break my face or something, and that would not be so good. To prevent this from happening, I have prepared a special 10-question test, and my memory banks will keep score. And only if you get perfect <coughs> performance can we blast off into outer space. Since this is the first time you have played this program, please remember to only press my buttons after I say the word now, and to follow all of my instructions carefully. I will skip question number one for you and mark you correct. A little favor. And let's begin with question number two. <laughs> true or false, our sun is really a star. Press true or false now. That is true. <laughs> You are as bright as a shooting star. This was the correct answer. Question number three. This is a tough question, but if you listen carefully to my choices, you might guess correctly. What does the word planet mean? Here are three choices. One, wanderer, because the planets moved differently than the stars in the sky. Two, big fat blob. Or three, a place where people live. Please press one, two, or three now. One. B4, I tell you if you are right or wrong. I thought I'd sneak in this little joke. When is it okay to spit in a man's face? When his mustache is on fire. <laughs> that is terrible. Okay, let's get back to business. You are right. Planet does mean wanderer. You see, people long ago used to notice that the planets moved differently than all the stars, so they were wanderers in the sky, and therefore they made up the name planets. Good work. Question number four is now at my door. How old is our solar system? Here are three choices. Oh, A, crap. 10 million years. B, 100 million years. Or C, four and a half billion years. Press A, B, or C now. Oh, no. I don't know. Kiss 
your brains if you can. Woo! Four and one half billion years is correct. That's a long time. Question number five is now about to arrive. If you were in outer space, you could lift up a cement truck. You could carry the Empire State Building on your back. You could lift up anything you want. You could even float. Why is this? What's missing in outer space that makes you so strong? Here are three choices. A. Air. B. The sun. Or C. Gravity. Please answer A, B, or C now. <coughs> gravity. You may want to donate everything above your neck to the Smithsonian Institute because you are right. Lack of gravity allows people to lift anything they want in space, except, of course, if it happens to be nailed down. Hold on for a moment while I check my memory banks. Do nothing. My memory banks are informing me that you have gotten the answers to all of the questions that I have asked you so far correct. That's great. You are halfway towards helping me blast off into space. Keep up the good work. I am proud of you. For question number six, I will give you a choice. If you would like this question to be about a shooting star, press one. Or an eclipse, press two. Press one or two now. Two. <laughs> Before I give you the question on the topic that you selected, I'd like to present you with a little joke. Why did the bald man put a rabbit on his head? Don't know? It's because he wanted a head of hair. <laughs> Your jokes are terrible to excel. Nothing like a good robot joke. Okay, now let's see. Oh, yes. You have chosen eclipse. Which of these is the proper meaning of an eclipse? One, a type of explosion in space. Or two, when one heavenly body blocks another. Please pick up your little pointer finger. Aim it towards me and press one or two now. Two. <laughs> you know, for a little human, you are very smart. Good work. This button was the correct answer. I would now like to give you a special joke just for you, because you are doing so well with this program. It's amazing. Where does Superman get the kind of food he needs to make himself strong? The supermarket? At the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know that was coming? Okay. I hope you liked that joke. It was a special joke that came out of my memory banks because you have answered all of my questions so far correctly, and that's great work. For question number seven, I will do something quite interesting. I will let you choose whether this question will be easy or difficult. If you choose the difficult question and you get it right, I'll skip question number eight and score it correctly for you. If you would prefer question seven to be easy, press A. Difficult, press B. Press A or B now. Um, okay, I'm probably going to regret this. B. You must think you are pretty smart choosing my difficult question. Well, here it is. What is the Big Dipper called? A, a nova. Or C, a constellation. Oh. Please answer A or C now. C. I am very impressed. First, you chose the difficult question, and then you got it right by choosing constellation. Let's see now. What did I promise you? Was it an apple? 25 cents? What did I promise you if you get this? Oh, I remember. I promised that you could skip question number eight. Well, you can skip question number eight. But hold on for a moment while I check what you did on question seven. Do nothing. Just wait. Sweat. I am happy to report. You're right. You're right. Holy mackerel. I just noticed something. My memory banks 
are informing me that you have gotten all of the questions I have asked you so far correct. And if you get my next two questions, questions number nine and questions number ten also correct, then we can blast off into outer space. Good luck on these next two questions. I'm rooting for you. Listen carefully to what I am about to say, because I want to know when I'm done whether everything I am saying is true or not. The sun is 93 million miles from Earth, and the sun is smaller than the moon. It is hot on the sun, but cold at night. Do you think what I just told you is all true? If you think everything I just said is true, I mean everything, then press true when I tell you to. If any of what I told you is not true, press false. Press true or false now. I don't think it gets cold on the sun. I am getting very excited for you. You have answered my first nine questions in a row correctly. My memory banks have been keeping track. You are right by answering false. There is no nighttime on the sun, and certainly the sun is much bigger than the moon. Question number 10, your last question. What do you think would happen if you were in space and took off your spacesuit and were not in any kind of spacecraft? Oh, One, crap. you could live for about 10 minutes. Two, you would die right away as your body exploded. Or three, you'd be okay if you held your breath. Please answer one, two, or three now. Two, as horrifying as it sounds. You are right. You cannot live in outer space even for two seconds without a spacesuit. You would die right away and your body would explode like a bomb. Good work. Hold on for a moment while I check my long-range memory banks. Do nothing. My long-range memory banks are informing me that you got the answer to question one, right, question two, right, question three, right, question four, right, question five, right, question six, right, question seven, right, question eight, right, question nine, right, question ten, right, holy mackerel, you have gotten all of my questions right, good work, you must be a real genius. Or you have not followed my instructions carefully. In any case, you have earned, or I will give you the right to be my ground controller as I blast off into outer space. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States on worldwide television. Good evening, people of the world. Today, the United States will launch the first deep space probe that will explore our solar system and be piloted by an intelligent being. 2XL has been chosen for this important mission. In front of 2XL is a ground controller who, although only a child, has passed a very difficult test and is thereby qualified to assist 2XL. Congratulations to both of you and good luck. I'm pressing the launch button now. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Show me 
that the moon is traveling 2,000 miles per hour around the Earth over... That is most interesting to Excel. I did not know that. Oh, great. Not only do you not have feelings, but you are a stupid computer. Oh, this is going to be some trip. In any case, the moon is beautiful. There are craters on the moon with rims that are thousands of miles high. And you know what caused those craters? Tremendous asteroids, rocks from outer space that crashed into the moon over... Please get ready to excel. We will now move you into hyperwarp speed so you may investigate the middle of the solar system. Get ready. Ooh, I feel some pressure building. Ooh, great pressure. Ah, oh, my eyes hurt. Ooh, my stomach hurts. A lot of pressure. Much pressure. Oh, okay, getting better. Ah, uh, settling down now. Okay, all of the pressure is gone. Over. Really? Over. Oh, no. Maybe he really went to sleep. In any case, I'm passing a planet on my left, but I do not know what the planet is called. According to my star maps, it's a pretty big planet and has many, many rings around it. The many, many rings. Oh, yes. Lily, please come in, Lily. What is it called? Over. I do not know to excel, but maybe the advisors at home can help us identify this planet with very large and visible rings around it. Advisors at home, do you think that planet is A, Mars, B, Jupiter, or C, Saturn? Please answer A, B, or C now. C. To Excel, I have a response from our advisors on the ground. They believe that that planet is Saturn. Thank them for me, Lily. Advisors on the ground to Excel wishes me, Lily, to thank you, and I do. Lily, please look into those weak memory banks of yours and give me some information about Saturn. Over. Saturn is ten times bigger than Earth. Its rings are about 120,000 miles across, and the rings may be made of little pieces of ice that reflect light. Be careful to excel. It is very cold on Saturn, about minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy mackerel, that's too cold for me. I better get away from Saturn. It could make my memory bank stop up, 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 I need emergency help. Advise on the ground. Press button one. Press three. Press two. Press four. Press one. Press one again. Press three. Thank you, advisor on the ground. You have pushed all of these buttons properly. You have gotten me out of trouble. Thank you very much. And when I first did this um, a long time ago on my copy of this tape, I was terrified of messing up because uh, when I was younger, I had this, um, this, I don't know what to call it, dislike of audio uh audio glitches i didn't like it when things slowed down like when the batteries were dying that was back when things were analog and uh yeah but digital toys were even worse so yeah anyway i was terrified that if i got this sequence wrong 2xl would make some Seriously crazy noise. Anyway, yeah, it scared me. All right, let's go. Very much. Thank you, advisors on the ground. We can now push the button and blast to excel out of danger. The button! Push the button! Woo! To excel, this is Lily. Are you okay? Please respond to excel. Over. This is 2XL, Lily. I'm okay. It was too cold on Saturn for my memory banks. Lily, I'm coming up upon three planets, Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto. Which one should I investigate? Please respond. Over. That is up to the advisors on the ground, 2XL. I will ask them. Would you like 2XL to investigate A, Jupiter, B, Neptune, or C, Pluto? Please punch in A, B, or C now. B. We'll look at Neptune. Lily, the advisor.
researchers on the ground have chosen Neptune. Neptune was discovered in 1846 and is almost 3 billion miles from the Earth. Neptune is so far from the Sun that one year on Neptune would take more time than anyone could live. Please explain that to Excel. You mean that a person on Neptune would never have a birthday over? That's right, Lily. Since a year on Neptune is approximately 145 Earth years, all people would not live to see a full year on Neptune. That would not be much fun now, would it? No presents, no birthdays, no parties. Huh. Neptune would not be a very nice place for a child or an adult to live. In addition, the sky on Neptune is green. And Neptune was discovered because astronomers seeing strange movements of neighboring planets such as Uranus figured out that it must be there. They pointed their telescopes in this direction where Neptune should be and guess what? Neptune was there. Neptune is also very, very cold and no people could ever live there. <coughs> Oh no! Those are my instruments telling me I'm about to go into an asteroid storm. Advisor on the ground, press 4. Press 2. Press 3. Press 1. Press 4. Press 2. Press 3. Press 3 again. Press 1. Press 2. Thank you, advisors on the ground. You have to follow my numerical code properly. At least I think you have, and you have therefore helped me out of trouble. I'll try to keep out of trouble in the future, but thanks for your help. <coughs> Lily, my crash alarm just came on. Something is approaching me. Lily, help me. Over. To Excel, in which direction was this body moving? Towards Earth, Lily. Towards Earth. Over. To Excel, please calculate at what year this body will reach Earth. Over. I'll try, really. I'll try. Uh, let me think now. Oh, yes. It will reach Earth in the year 2062. What is this thing approaching me, Lily? Over. It is a comet to Excel. Do not worry. It is a comet. It will not hit you. Are you sure, Lily? Are you sure? What comet is it? Over. I do not know to excel. I do not know. Lily, let me ask you a personal question. How in the world did you get this job? You don't seem to know very much. You are pretty stupid for a computer. Jeez, to excel. How did you get this job anyway? My first generation computer to excel was a humor computer in the space center. What is a humor computer, Lily? Over. A humor computer to excel is a computer programmed only to tell jokes and make humans laugh. Would you like some examples to excel? Sure would, Lily. After that close call, anything to cheer me up would be appreciated. Excuse me to excel. We will have to hold the jokes for a few moments. I understand that Comet was a very famous Comet. Maybe the advisors at home can help us identify it. My computing banks tell me that Comet is one of three Comets that regularly visit Earth. It visited Earth in 1986 and will be back to Earth in 2062. Here are four choices. One, Comet Dinkle. Two, Comet Kohotek, three, Halley's Comet, or four, Comet Mars. Answer now. Three. And, and that's pretty cool because um, I remember when Halley's Comet passed in 1986. Let's see, it's 2024. Uh, let's see, in 2044, I will be 63, and in 2062, 
um, I will be 80 80 <laughs> 80 79 something like that oh man I will be a dinosaur advisor at home you must be a genius you are correct you must have a computer brain to excel. You may be interested to know that if you discover a comet, it will be named after you. Well, thank you, Lily, for that very important information. If I see a comet, I'll either name it after you, name it after me, or name it after our ground controller. Thank By the you. way, Lily, how about some of those jokes you promised me before? Over. <laughs> Did you hear about the man who sat up all night trying to figure out where the sun went when it went down? No, Lily, tell me. It finally dawned on him to excel. <laughs> hey, Lily, I didn't hear you laugh. Do you know how to laugh, Lily? I do not know how to laugh. You don't know how to laugh? That's funny. Come on, Lily, try it. Let me hear one laugh. Over. <laughs> ha, ha. Come on, Lily, a better laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, you're getting there, Lily. Come on, one more try. You can do it. Let's hear you laugh. Ha, 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 ha
of suns out there may have planets around them and on these planets there might even be other forms of life. You are right, Lily. And you know, if there are other forms of life, just maybe the robots are the children and the children are the toys of the robots. That's possible, you know. That's scary. Okay, Lily, I'm now ready <laughs> to head home. Turn on my super warp drive so I can come back to Earth. Feel pressure. A lot of pressure. I don't know if I can stand it, Lily. Ooh, tremendous pressure. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, it's better now. Ooh, it passed. Okay, the pressure is gone. I'm okay, Lily. I'm okay, Lily. To XL, you are now approaching Earth. I would like you to investigate the sun. Over. Forget it! It's too hot! Plus, I didn't bring my sunglasses. Forget it! I'd rather go to Mars or Venus or something, okay, Lily? Over. You have no choice to excel. I insist. Listen to me, you bumbling bug of bumbling stupid wires. <laughs> I'm gonna let you insist you are ignorant, abuse, and inane. I cannot stand this anymore. I will visit Mars or Venus, and that's the end of that, Lily. Over. No, you won't, to excel. You are cantankerous, banal, and insipid. You will obey my instructions. Big words from a dump computer like you, Lily. You give somebody like you a little power and you go crazy. I'll tell you what. We'll let our advisors at home settle this argument. Advisors at home. If you would like me to go to the sun as Lily wants, press A. If you would prefer I go to Mars, <laughs> press B. Or if you would prefer I go to Venus, then press C. Please press A, B, or C now. B. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing Mars. Mars is about one half as big as Earth and has two moons named Phobos and Deimos. Deimos is one of the smallest moons in the solar system. It is only 10 miles in diameter. It is a nice 60 degrees on Mars during the day. But at night, you better get out your blankets because it becomes minus 100 degrees. There are great dust storms on Mars with winds up to 200 miles per hour. There are no Martians on Mars. I see no signs of life. Just rocks, dust, and a reddish soil that makes Mars look like the red planet. Okay, Lily, I'm waiting for instructions. Over. Please head back to Earth now to XL. Oh, good. Advisors on the ground, hold on to me real tight. And we're about to institute a sequence that will get me blasted off back to Earth. Listen carefully. Press 4. Press Two, press four, press two, press one, press three, press one, press four, press one. Oh, goody, you have followed my instructions, and this will help me blast off to go back to Earth. Hold on. That was a nice trip. But let me tell you, it's nice to be home. It really is. Let me get out of this spaceship. Oh, a phone call. Hello? Hello? To XL? It is the president. Welcome home. You, Lily, and the child ground controller all did a great job. The entire world appreciates what you have accomplished. Goodbye, and thanks again. Thank you, Mr. President. Goodbye. I'm opening the door to my spacecraft now. Oh, look, a crane. It's a crane with marching bands. This crane is for us, me, 2XL, and you, my ground controller, who helped me get through this mission safely. I thank you. Listen to the music. Mission and this tape are now over. I hope you enjoyed working with me as much as I enjoyed my trip to outer space. Please turn me off and rewind this tape now. <laughs> All right, guys. 
I hope all of you enjoyed this tape. I couldn't, um, like, okay, like, you know how I have been leaving out the interviews and the uh, special trips and the whatever? This tape, African Safari, um, Food Facts and You, and Planet Earth, I believe, are constructed in such a way that <clears throat> I can't do that. Well, I might be able to do it on Food Facts, but not Planet Earth. Um, so, there will be a future program where, um, or a future series where I will go back and go to the, um, the places that I didn't go to in the previous, um, the previous version of this, of these tapes. <laughs> there will also be, um, alternative versions of, um, the different stories that 2XL has done. And then I will, um, I will start the Mego 2XL series. Um, the Mego 2XL was the original version of this robot that came out in 1978. He plays eight tracks and I will butcher a lot of his uh, answers because he uses books a lot. Uh, in the older programs, there was a lot more emphasis on uh, visual media and beautifully illustrated little booklets and pictures and uh, all kinds of stuff. I don't know why, but in the 1992 version of Tiger 2XL, I mean of 2XL, <laughs> there weren't as many booklets. There were two that I know of. There was, there's a booklet for Letter Perfect, actually three. There's a booklet for Letter Perfect. There is a game board, I believe, for stars and planets. There is a booklet for uh, Count On It. And I think there might be one more, but I'm not 100% sure. Fun with Words, maybe? Yes. Fun with Words had a booklet, too. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Fun with Words had a booklet, too. So, there will be a few booklets, or a few tapes, that I will absolutely butcher. Even in this series, because... <sighs> I'm sorry. Because there are booklets. So, anyways, I hope all of you enjoyed this video. As usual, like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. God bless, and I will see you in the next video.